we get called. Yesterday was one of those cases where we were called in on someone who was violent when it came to mental health. We did not receive a mental health call. We received a 911 call for a domestic situation involving someone with a knife, with a weapon. That's what was given to our deputies. Our deputies responded to Haywood Brockton Road around 6 o'clock yesterday. Um, first deputy arrived, his name is John Anderson. He's been with the Sheriff's Department about two years. Um, as soon as he arrived, um, the mother and some other family members were outside. At that point, they were advising the deputy that they had been attacked, that the suspect was still in the house. Um, his brother even said that he had a knife at some point. Um, almost immediately after that, um, the subject came out. His, the coroner's identified him as Irvin Charlie. He came out. He was armed with a, a wooden stake. Some people have called it a stick. It's not a stick. It didn't come from a tree. It's like an arm of a, a chair, maybe, where it has a handle, and then it goes down to a sharp point. He had that in his hand. He came out in front of the deputy. The deputy was giving him command. Uh, he kept approaching the deputy. The deputy kept backing up as he was giving him commands. Uh, called for assistance. Another deputy arrived. That deputy was doing the same thing, was giving him, giving him commands on what to do, and that was to drop the knife. Um, they believed that it was a knife. It looked like a knife. Uh, at one point, the deputy pulled his taser and attempted to uh, use non-lethal uh, to subdue the subject. The taser did not work. Almost immediately after he deployed his taser, that's when Mr. Charlie uh, ran at the deputy with the um, wooden stake in his hand and the deputy fired. Um, it was a very close encounter. The last shot was probably less than three feet away. This whole incident happened in about a minute and 47 seconds. It was very quickly. Um, for the next 20 minutes, our deputies gave first aid and tried to save um, Mr. Charlie. Um, they were not successful. Some things has been said in the community that I want to clear up very quickly. Uh, he was not shot in the back. He was not shot 10 times, and the coroner will address that. He was not shot when he was handcuffed. He was not tased multiple times. Everything that happened was on body cam. There's, there's video of the whole incident. Uh, I am not going to show that publicly in a minute. I'm going to show about a 10 to 15 second clip. You will not see people's faces. You will see the subject. You'll see the deputy giving commands and you'll see the wooden stake that he had in his hand. Um, I think it'd be disrespectful to the, to the community and also to Mr. Charlie's family for me to show this publicly at this point. Now, the coroner's looked at it. The solicitor's gonna see it later today. Some various organizations and our community have seen it. Uh, at six o'clock tonight, our Citizens Advisory Council will be in and they will see it. Uh, tomorrow, if the family is willing and wants to, then we'll show it to the family. Um, it's a very graphic video. It's just not something that everybody needs to see. It's there. Um, I think the people that need to see it is gonna see it. I think it shows and proves what happened, how fast it happened, and also shows the actions of the deputies. We have done an investigation. We've processed the scene. We'll be taking statements. We'll be putting a package together that will go to the solicitor, who will then he'll decide if the officer act justifiable or not. Um, it's, it's just, it's sad all around. Um, mental health is a problem in our community. Uh, we do not need to continue to ignore it. When somebody cries out for help, they need to get that help. They just don't need to be ignored. Um, we all need to do a better job. As a mental health professionals, our community, our families, law enforcement, everybody needs to do a better job in addressing mental health. We don't need to lose anybody else. 
uh, to something like this. But we also have to protect our community and we have to protect our deputies. Um, we put our deputies in a very bad situation when they have to respond to incidents like this. That they can't lose their life. And unfortunately, they have to protect their lives and the lives of others. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody, nobody wants to be put in that position. There's no law enforcement officer I know that works at Richmond County Sheriff's Department that would ever want to be put in that position, but unfortunately we do. The last time a Richland County deputy shot and killed someone in Richland County was 2013. 2013, that's a long time. I hope there's many more years before we have to do it again. This time our calling no for aggression. Thank you, Sheriff Lott. We can confirm that some of the rumors that we're hearing in the community are not true. This uh, Mr. Charlie, Mr. Irvin Charlie was not shot in his back. He was not shot while he was handcuffed. We can um, agree with the sheriff and this department that the decedent was not um, shot first. They did try to use the taser. It did not stick in the skin. And so it did not stop him as you would expect a taser to do so. Uh, he was shot four times, um, but he was not shot in the back. Um, the bullets affected his aorta, his heart, and his liver. And so we can, um, without a doubt, and scientifically prove that he was not shot in the back. Um, and I think that's really important to control the narrative that's going around in the community and, and to address that um, head on. Um, again, the rumor that he was handcuffed uh, while he was shot, that is absolutely not true. Um, and the officers did render CPR immediately um, after the incident, trying to save him, uh, but the, the wounds were fatal. We recovered three projectiles today. Um, and yes, there were projectiles in his back, but they went in from the front. Um, and so we can confirm that. And I'll answer any questions if anyone has them, but let's please be mindful that the family may also see this and we don't want to be too graphic. Are there any questions? Thank you. Again, this is not a press conference that any of us would like to have. You know, we do have a family that's grieving. Um, it's, it's a sad situation for everybody that's involved. So I just ask the community, just lift up this family in prayers, lift up the deputy that was involved in this prayer, and lift up the community in prayers. Uh, we need it. We need it. And we need to address mental health issues um, the way they need to be addressed. Questions? So uh, just to confirm, uh, you said he was shot four times? Yes, he was shot four times. We only had one officer um, fire his weapon. Um, at this time, we'll show a very short clip that you'll see. There's the weapon in his hand. There's another shot of it. So it's not a stick. That is all we're going to show. And again, a couple reasons I want to show it is to show the weapon in his hand, what type of weapon it is, to dispel the rumor that it was a, just a stick. A stick comes from a tree. That's not from. That's not a stick that comes from a tree. You can see that he is constantly walking toward the officer, and, and the officer is giving ground. The officer is backing up. Um, this continues. It continues until the. Another officer arrives, and then there's um, they backing up also. And then the taser is used, ineffective, and he charges the officer very quickly. He charges the officer with that weapon in his hand. Go ahead. Was that Deputy Anderson in, that we're seeing in the video? That's Deputy Anderson in the video. I do have a question about uh, maybe protocol or procedures when dealing with um, subjects that have mental instabilities. Do you have practices? for your officers to where they can handle the situation a little bit better? Yeah, officers are trained. 
The all officers go through the criminal justice academy. They train. We train in-house. We have crisis intervention teams. We do all we can. But this was not a mental health call. This call was given to us as a domestic with a weapon, with a knife. It was not put out as a mental health call. And you saw as soon as they pulled in, um, well, you didn't see it. The coroner saw it. As soon as they pulled in, uh, talked to the family members, they told about their injuries and what was going on. Um, and then he comes out the house and it continues where you saw it until the shooting. Were any family members um, injured through this um, call? Yes, not by us. A couple family members did have injuries. After the initial, like the first shot, and maybe he was down, why did he continue to shoot? He wasn't down when he was shot. He continued to run at him. He did not, he stopped shooting when he fell. And the coroner seen it. They both fell to get at the same time. He was rushing at the officer. And as he was rushing at the officer, the officer was firing. He continued to come at him. All the shots that the officer gave was when the subject was running at him and he was standing up. And you said only uh, Deputy Hanson fired his weapon? No, the other, the other one. Deputy Hintz was the only one that fired his weapon. Deputy Anderson, who you saw giving directions there, did not fire his weapon. Only one officer fired his weapon. Um, whose house did the shooting take place at? And um, why was he there? That's his family member's house. At least three. All right. Thank you. Oh, one more question. Um, just, you know, what would you say um, to family members um, who are saying that, you know, he didn't deserve to die, he, he didn't deserve to, you know, be this way to be used? What's, what's your response to those family members in that scene? We can't expect these deputies to go out here and be killed. They have to protect themselves. And that's what this deputy did yesterday. He protected himself. He went home to his family last night. Unfortunately, Mr. Charlie didn't. That was a decision that he made. Now, you know, do his mental health condition, I don't know what was in his mind or what was in his heart. But I also know that you know, this deputy was not expected to die. And he had to protect himself, and that's what he did yesterday. So. I talked to the family, the coroner's talked to the family. We feel, we feel for the family, but th this was not something that we created. All right, thank you.